One of the verses that you all from the GAFCON Global Anglican Future Conference, hence the name GAFCON. So not a government program to rid us of um, insects and pests, or whatever it says. <laughs> it's a strange name, you know. But um, but but and you all are familiar that established um, somewhat in light of Lambeth, but actually really established in light of the last five years trajectory of sort of a leadership and theological breakdown in the communion. Good to see you all again. Thank you. Um, so. Uh, put together in eight months, which in itself um, has, has a bit of a cross in the Red Sea quality. I mean, really quite miraculous. 1,200 invited pilgrims from literally all around the world came together in Jerusalem, the coordination efforts and everything. It was just a remarkable thing, which goes toward my first main takeaway from the experience of being a pilgrim there, which was that it was a spiritual breakthrough. And I think anything else that would first and foremost define GAFCON would be a confusion and we really missed the priority of what happened there as far as um, my experience. It was clearly a 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, do not quench the spirit moment. Uh, the spirit of God was not quenched indeed. He really so he had freedom to move and, and to reign. I think secondly, I thought a lot about Acts chapter 15, um, which is the Council of Jerusalem, and particularly that verse, um, I think it's Acts 15, 6, the apostles and the elders were gathered together to consider. And, of course, they were considering uh, critical issues before the expansion of the kingdom. And that's exactly what was happening here. You had um, sort of the apostolic ministry in the form of uh, godly bishops and, and in the form of the word of God being taught and preached. Maybe now I should stand. That we're getting more folks here. <laughs> okay. Um, and you had elders, uh, presbyters, and you had deacons, and you had lay folk all gathered together to consider to consider before the Holy Spirit what are the next steps of the Anglican Communion. And it was truly that. So any message that, that's gotten out that somehow this was engineered or in any way um, contrived is so far from the truth. As a matter of fact, this is one of the really fun things, watching the English, interacting with the Australians, interacting with the Americans, interacting with the Kenyans, interacting with the um, West Africans and the Nigerians, interacting with the Asians. I mean, it was... Uh, the Canadians, it was a lot of fun to have that mix. And one thing that happened was the Archbishop of Sydney, um, Philip Jensen, who's um, a very well-planned, uh, careful theological thinker, came with a draft of the GAFCON statement, which was a theological statement to be released at the end of the week. He was worried that in six days, with so much going on, they wouldn't get it done. So he came with a draft. Archbishop Akinola, who's the primate of Nigeria, you all familiar with the language of primate, does that make sense? key leader of provinces, 38 provinces throughout the world. And Ekinol is one of the key leaders of this whole deal. He saw the statement and said, put it away. He said, we will hear from the Holy Spirit and we'll hear from the people of God. That's how we'll draft the statement. Hmm. Now Jensen told this story on himself, which makes it even better. <laughs> so he said, you know, obviously there was another way this was going to happen. And literally we had small groups every day of 8 to 10 people. I had two Nigerian bishops, one Ugandan bishop, a Canadian churchwoman. Uh, Australian uh, professor, we all gathered together and we responded to questions the bishops were asking us. And they took all those responses every day and they collated and they synthesized to develop this eventual, what's been called the SCAFCON statement that included a thing called the Jerusalem Declaration. So two things coming out of this that were material and key. The GAFCON statement, which is at gafcon.org, um, easy to download. And that includes the Jerusalem Declaration, a 14-point, carefully thought through, as best you can do in six days, pretty remarkable document, a 14-point theological foundation for the GAFCON movement. One slogan that was consistently being used was, this is not a moment, it's a movement, within the Anglican Communion. And that within preposition was also very important to what happened within that week. Okay. Um, just, I'm still just doing some scripture. Third scripture that I thought a lot about was that wonderful uh, teaching of Jesus where he uses a simile. He says, the wise scribe um, that understands the kingdom of God is like a master of the house that brings out of the treasury something old and something new. Isn't that great? And I mean, that's, 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 the, that's the genius of Anglicanism when she's faithful. And she brings out of the treasury something old and something new. She's always saying contextualize to the language of the culture and to the, the context of the culture, but Anglicanism has always said we're rooted not just in the Reformation, that's critical, we're also rooted in the early church fathers and we're rooted ultimately in the apostolic witness of the New Testament and, and, and the witness of God in the Old Testament. So 
at GAFCON, you had that absolute remarkable dynamic of Anglicanism. We brought under the trigger something old and something new. The old is the continuity to the apostolic message. The new is the power of the Holy Spirit is doing something global in our day that we all get to participate in in faithfulness to the Word of God. Okay, so main priority takeaway. Main priority takeaway, those are just scripture verses, was biblical authority. Um, like my brother, I'm absolutely nuts about biblical authority. I'm totally committed to it, but I got tired of hearing about it after six days. I mean, it was, it was with, without question, the mantra of Gavikon is biblical authority. And what you had is because biblical authority is a priority within Anglican polity. <clears throat> so the understanding is that the headship of Anglican polity is not a pope, but it is ultimately the word of God in Jesus Christ and the scriptures as God's word written. So what happens in Anglicanism, what happened in the 16th century and 17th century, and what's happening in the 21st century, is that when you get a tension, which no Anglican ever wants to experience, between the Word of God taught and the way the Word of God is being treated by our bishops, because we are a bishop movement, we're Episcopal, it means bishop, right? So bishops are core to who we are. When you have bishops who aren't teaching the Word of God and you have the Word of God, you run into an absolute you know, squeeze. It's a dilemma that's got to be solved eventually. And it's very similar what happened in the English Reformation is you had the Word of God first and foremost and you have practices that were contrary to the Word of God and English Reformers said, oh, I mean, they, they did it grudgingly. They, they did it with grief, but they said, here's the Word of God and that will always be first and foremost. We've got to make separation. Now, as was the case in the 16th century, there's also some political machinations and <clears throat> a king <coughs> has something to do with that. That's one of our unfortunate parts of our history. And there are political machinations and <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> there are political machinations in this as well. Oh, thank you. And there, there's political stuff happening. Of course there is. I mean, of course stuff's happening behind closed doors that someone low on the food chain like myself had no idea about. Of course there's tensions. Of course Australia has tensions with Nigeria. Of course East and West Africans have tensions. I mean, they're people. And it's here as well. But once again, the overriding experience was we were in a spiritual breakthrough. When they read the GAFCON statement, because of the way that they had, had small groups and we all had ownership and buy-in and opportunity to be a part of it, when they read the GAFCON statement, they were very worried at the end of the week there'd be div division, fragmentation, all of what the press was trying to, to capture. I'm telling you, when they read it, there were people literally just standing spontaneously on their feet. I mean, the nations were gathered, black, white, yellow, red, and they were all up on their feet. There were people, there were men in their 60s weeping who have dreamed of a day like this in Anglicanism when the Word of God would once again be restored to its rightful place and bishops would lead like men of God. It was an unbelievable moment, and that was the overriding takeaway from what God did. So biblical authority was really, really key in, in the whole time, and that, that was um, incredibly important. Uh, second